Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we got a, a great update, an interesting update for you all. We are now supporting Model Context Protocol in public preview for Logic App Standard. So this is going to allow you to go ahead and take existing or new workflows and expose them as MCP tools that you can then go ahead and connect to from your agents all in a secure manner. Naturally, with our large library of connectors, this becomes quite advantageous for developers to quickly build agent-based connectivity to all of your different business systems. So go ahead, let's take a deep dive and check it all out. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about Logic Apps as an MCP server. So Logic App Standard can be exposed as an MCP server by simply editing your host.json config. And I'll show you that a little bit in the demo. And what this allows you to do is to take a Logic App Standard application and enable it as an MCP server. And what this will do is for every workflow that has an HTTP trigger and a corresponding response action, we'll turn it into an MCP tool. Part of this, we wanna make sure that you're doing this in a secure manner. And so we've built this capability to support easy auth authentication. You might have already seen, if not, you know, we've also released some integration with API Center. And you might be wondering, oh, what's the difference between API Center and, and this, this model? Uh, under the hood, it's exactly the same. At the end of the day, the Logic App is enabled as MCP server, it has tools. Uh, this just gives you more control over what you wanna do with workflows. Maybe you have more actions or connectors that you want to put into the mix. And, and this just gives you more control and gives you the ability to enrich your scenarios with additional components as well. All right, so let's walk through the process of getting this all set up. So it starts with your workflows. It starts with your logic app. Here I just have a, a general logic app. We've rolled this out worldwide. So go ahead and either use an existing logic app or provision new, up to you. Then go ahead and create your workflows. Now I'm gonna start with the simpler workflow. Uh, this is a workflow that's gonna go ahead and get assignment groups from ServiceNow. So I go in, I create an HTTP, HTTP trigger, I provide a description for that particular workflow. I don't have a, a request body because in this case, I'm not accepting any parameters. It'll just return all of them. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and respond back and, and just include the result from ServiceNow. And this is going to send back all of the assignment groups from ServiceNow itself. Okay, so let's go into the second workflow. This one's going to be a little bit more um, involved or not necessarily complicated, but just some additional configuration. So once again, you always want to have a tool description. This note here that's hanging off the trigger, uh, that is going to be useful where when you have an agent that is trying to discover uh, the appropriate tools that it can go ahead and use. Now, the other thing that's super important is creating a request body schema. So you can once again, go ahead and use the sample to get started. But then there's a few other things you want to take care of. For each of the properties, you do want to provide a description. I would also say that you also want to use unique names. So you might not want to just have like address. If you've got repeating nodes or separate nodes, it might be like shipping address, billing address, right? Like be more specific. Then make sure you've got your data types and then also have descriptions for each of the properties as well. Now, if you have situations where you've got required properties that you are expecting, go ahead and include a required node here. And then you've got an array of your property names that you want to go ahead and include. You can choose as little or as many as necessary from that perspective. Then once again, go ahead and save these. I would suggest just testing these, you know, testing these before you start getting in agents in the mix, but just making sure that they work as expected. Now, next up, we want to go ahead and check out our host.json file. Now you head down to advanced tools. And then once you go ahead and do that, you can click on go. That's going to open up this diagnostic console uh, web application. Click on site, then click on www root. Then click on the pencil for edit. And what you want to go ahead and add is after this extension bundle node, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add this extensions, workflow, MCP server endpoints, and then the three different um, closing curly brackets. 
Now, I will include a link in the description to our docs where you can go ahead and obtain this information as well. So go ahead, click on that, and then go ahead and save it. Uh, that will naturally force a work for your Logic App instance to restart, so just a heads up on that front. Now, there's another really important piece here, which is related to authentication. So inside of our authentication tab here, uh, this is what's also known as Easy Auth, we've got this configured. Okay, so for those of you who may not be um, familiar with Easy Auth, uh, it does require an app registration. So you might be asking, okay, what's that? So inside of the Azure portal, you can search for app registrations, or maybe it'll show up there for you. And then here we've got all of the existing uh, owned applications. So these would be app registrations that I've gone ahead and created myself. Uh, this is where you would want to go ahead and create your own registration. Now I've already done that, so let me just show you what I went ahead and did. So inside of the app registration process, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. So I've gone ahead and done that. And after that, I will um, end up in this screen. And there's kind of one, there's one key piece that I need to take care of, and that is going to expose an API. And then I would need to be able to go ahead and to create. Now. The scope in this case is going to be called this user underscore impersonation. So maybe let's just go ahead and open that up. So you can go ahead and use user underscore impersonation, and then you can choose who can consent. Generally, I would say if you've got developers involved, you're going to want admins and users. Otherwise, an admin is going to have to go in there and sort of configure this upon uh, this running when we go ahead and try to call this MCP server. So I would suggest admins and users, unless there's a real reason not to do that, just provide some values for your content here. You've got consent, display name, consent description for both admin and user, make sure it's an enabled state and go ahead and save that information. Now there's a couple of values you're gonna to need to copy here. So from that overview page, uh, you're gonna to need to copy the client ID and then also the tenant ID as well. So you'll see those showing up here in the left hand side. So now back in your logic app, in the authentication tab, you're gonna go ahead and add a provider. You're gonna see a drop down for Microsoft and you'll go ahead and select that. Now there's some additional settings you do want to go ahead and enable. Uh, you're gonna to need to provide the client ID or the application ID you're gonna to need to provide an issuer URL. And so what this is gonna be is this login.microsoftonline.com, then your tenant ID, followed by v2.0. So do be aware of that. Your values will obviously be different than mine, so I'm gonna blur mine out. Then there's some additional checks. Now these are just some default settings. You do have some control over these. Now, the client application requirement, we're gonna go ahead and allow requests from any application. Now, you, know, you might be saying, well, it says not recommended, and yeah, that's fair, but unless you have specific client applications that you've already provisioned or, or know you're gonna be using, this will be the setting that you should use. Now, if you already have client application, and for example, you could do this with VS Code, where VS Code is a client application that's found inside of Entra ID, you could go grab that value and you could specify it here as, as the particular application. But if you don't know what those are, I would just start with here. The other thing you would, can select is allow requests from any identity. So you can think about this as authentication versus authorization, right? So in this case, we're saying if we have an authenticated user in our tenant, um, they will be able to go ahead and call this MCP server. If you wanted to restrict that only certain identities can do that, you can select this value and then you would go ahead and choose those object IDs from those users in your tenant. But for now, to keep things simple, we'll allow all requests from any identity and this would be in our tenant. And then the tenant requirement, uh, you have some control here, just suggesting using the default restrictions based on issuer for now. So you go ahead and save all of this information and you are good to go and should be wired up. Now, another thing we're gonna need, and this is inside the Logic app, is the, the URL. So we're gonna need to go ahead and copy this URL. So we'll need that in, in a little bit here. All right, so now I'm, we wanna go ahead and call our 
MCP server, I'm gonna use VS Code to go do this because VS Code with GitHub Copilot has an agent built in. It's the simplest way to get this going. But um, yeah, this is the way I would suggest trying it, at least at this point. So we're gonna to wanna to go into our command palette and then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and search for MCP and then add server. If you are using a recent version of, MC, of VS Code, this will be available to you. The, you know, as of like, I think it was July, <clears throat> they baked in the MCP stuff automatically. So we went ahead, let me do that again because I was, wasn't talking through it, but uh, hit command palette, add server. Then you wanna choose HTTP or SSE. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now we need to provide the URL that I just discussed on the Logic app. So let's go ahead and paste this in. Now we need to make a couple small changes here. So add HTTPS and then also add slash API slash MCP, then hit enter, then give uh, a descriptive name for your MCP server. So we are going to call this uh, IT service management. I'm just gonna call this video just because I've done this before. So now we can see that now. So see, we get this pop-up initially saying, hey, you need to go ahead and authenticate. This is a good thing because what's happened is it's tried to connect and then it said, oh, like this has actually got authentication enabled. So we need to go ahead and do that. So we wanna click on allow, select our account. Now we may not see it here because I've gone through this before, but you should now see some consent pop-ups that we had previously configured. And this is a good thing. This is saying, hey, your application is trying to connect and you know this is the purpose of this and you then have the choice to proceed or to go ahead and to quit. Okay, so we see that it's started, it's running, and we can see we've got two tools, discover, that's good. Now we can go click on this tool icon here as well. And if we just wanna go ahead and search, we can go and try to find that we do have this IT service management video. Now, I had previously gone ahead and done this, so I'm gonna deselect this one just so we don't have any sort of ambiguous calls that are being made. But here we've got the two tools or workflows that we previously created. Now, let's go ahead and try to log a particular request, uh, like an IT incident. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now what's kind of interesting about this, right? And this is great, this is really cool functionality. This is agentic processing right here. As part of our call to create that IT incident, we have a reference to a, an ID for an assignment group. And so instead of this just failing, our agent is smart enough to know, oh, okay, I need to go get an assignment group value first before I create a ticket. Then it discovers like, hey, I've got this tool here that can get assignment groups. Let's go ahead and, and do that. So we're gonna go ahead and call that tool. Now, I didn't explicitly tell it to do that. It went and did it itself. Pretty awesome, right? So it's gonna come back with all these different you know, assignment groups that we can use. Now, he's saying, the agent's saying, okay, provide the name of the group along with the issue description and severity and a date time of the issue. Great. So I wanna log this to the integration team. Since we have a big issue, we've got a payroll interface that is down. So we want to make sure that this is a is a high severity. And we can say this issue happened 30 minutes ago. So now it's going to then populate and plug in all of these values into our request and set everything up for us properly, right? And so this is the beauty of using this agentic process. It went ahead and got the ID that we needed. This is a system ID, like we're not gonna know this on our own. We need to be able to go do a lookup. So this is pretty cool if you ask me. So now we'll go ahead and call. Under the hood, this workflow should be called. And it's perfect, we've got an incident number that has been created, uh, 5023. All right, so if we head over to our Logic app, and we head over to our create incident and we check out our run history. Sure enough, we see that we do have a ticket that was created and we can see that the uh, it ends in 5023. 
So this is pretty cool. This is a, a great way to go ahead and enable MCP servers with Logic Apps. You also get the benefit of Logic Apps standard when you go ahead and choose to use this. You need to access on-premises networks, go for it. Use a VNet. You want to go ahead and use managed identity to connect to different resources, go for it. You want to use custom connectors, you want to use service providers. It's all there. So if you can go ahead and use it in Logic Apps standard, then you'll be able to go ahead and call it as an MCP endpoint using this particular particular method provided you have an HTTP request trigger and an HTTP response. So thanks for checking out this video and would love to hear how you're using MCP servers in your solutions.